All right, hello everybody. How are we all doing? I'm back for another TCAP commentary. Um, I'm recording this one. It's like pretty late at night, and I'm having some alcohol. I haven't had alcohol since New Year's, and I'm, uh, I'm having a little. Uh, I'm having a little beverage. I'm, I'm in a good. I'm in a good humor. Uh, I got some John Pierre Weary loaded up here. I got the perfect picture of him with his tongue out. You know, um, how do I start? It's been a while. I, I don't know if I even. I uh, really remember how to do this. Um, he's John Pierre Weary. He was caught in the sting and to catch a predator. There's a picture of him. There's his tongue. You can see it. It's right. It's in, it's jetting out of his mouth right there. Um, yeah, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a storyteller predator. Uh, not not your not your um, not not like your starter kind of predator. He's he's like he's like the seafood of predator, right? You got to have a little. Uh, refined palate before you dive into Jean Pierre Weary, but uh, you know once you get there, he's he's really worth it. Um, he's 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 quite the uh, quite the quite the quite the predator. He, you know what he is? He's like crab. He's like a crab predator because you gotta you gotta dig. You gotta do do a little bit of work to find the to find the humor in Jean Pierre Weary, but it's it's worth it. You get some butter. I got my butter dip here, and then I'm gonna dip some Jean Pierre Weary in. So it's, it's all gonna be good. Um, yeah, also, uh, I'll leave the, uh, original link to the, to the, to the video that I'm going to be doing commentary on here. I will be doing commentary here. That is a TCAP commentary. Some people don't quite understand what commentary means. So, uh, you know, I will be talking over the video and the link to the video without my commentary, I will leave in the description. So if you don't want my commentary... Uh, you can check it out there. Or better yet, uh, ignore this and just leave me a comment on this video saying how I should shut up because I'll, I'll listen to that. Here we go. He knocked on someone's door. Thankfully, it was ours. Sergeant Chad Bianco from the Riverside oh, County Sheriff's Department. And here, I guess this is, uh, you know, part of uh, some, some background information at the start of the episode or something because Chad Bianco has to get his two cents in here before we get... Get into the crab meat that is Describes John Pierre Describes the Weary. criminal past of our latest arrival. He's 48-year-old oh. Jean-Pierre Michael Weary. He has a conviction for an uh, assault with a... Oh, is this... Is it, is it the patio lighting? I, I don't know why, but I always thought that Jean-Pierre Weary came at night. I think I think it might be just the pa uh, the the lighting, but it looks like daylight a little bit here. But it might just be the patio lighting. Deadly weapon. That went back to, I believe, 1981. <laughs> he was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison for rape. Oh, Jesus. And in 2000, he was also sent to prison for failure to register as a sex offender. Okay. Despite the... Yeah, okay, so it's obviously just the patio lighting. Um, he's he's a violent guy. He's a, he's a rapist. He's a sex offender. He's a, he's a criminal. And he also invented Jurassic Park. So, uh, you know, a lot, lot going on for JPW here. Being a here. convicted rapist, here he is tonight at our undercover house after making plans for sex with a decoy posing as a 13-year-old boy. Online, he told the decoy that... He All right, the, uh, the, much, the much maligned psh, psh, rapping on the, on, the, on the door there. Psh, psh. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> I don't know how you kindergarten wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's a prison thing. I know it's been speculated it's a prison thing. But if you're going to go to someone's back door, you're going to you know, knock on their back, uh, their back door, their back screen door, and you're going to go, psh, psh. just say hi. Hello, this is John. Is, it, is, uh, is Luke here? I, I'm here to meet Luke. You know, if you're making noise and clearly making yourself known, like, no one's... I, I don't know what that the point of that is. That's... He was a promotional not photographer. Very wise. I, I expected a smarter move from John Pierre Weary. films here. as kindergarten cop and some gay porn films. Then he tells the decoy he can help launch the boy's modeling career. I want to do shoots, shots... What? I want to I wanna shoot shots that'll promote you. I want to do the SAG shots for you and get them so you can have your SAG card, which you must have if you are ever going to model. It's spelled model wrong. It's great. Real modeling is good to great pay. Might even land you an acting career. So is porn. Porn is more fun if you see what I mean. 
when you say you want to blank, do you want to have me blank or you blank me or both? Can I taste your nuts? <laughs> Can I taste your nuts? Hanson will say that line later. Will you blank me? That's what porn is. Lots of all day sex. How can I promote someone I've never had lots of hot sex with? Wow, a regular Shakespeare. Are you sure that uh, Jean Pierre Weary picked the wrong career as a photographer? He should have been a screenwriter. But there's a catch. He writes, How can I promote someone I never had lots oh, of is. hot sex with? That's a good Decoy point. He agrees to sex in exchange for the career help. <laughs> Then he just, so he wanders off, you know, he doesn't get the response he's looking for. <laughs> of course, John Pierre Weary walked for, you know, several hours. You know, he looked, he looked like he was weary, as Hanson will say in the behind the scenes bit here. Um, you know, I, I guess what he, uh, maybe he didn't double check that this was the right house and wants to go back after making his presence known with his little psh -psh. You know, discreet though it may be, he's already played his hand. If he's at the wrong house, he's already screwed. So, not 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 a wise move from JPW here. <laughs> I, I would expect more from a a veteran of the film industry <laughs> like him. <laughs> There's Dell. Yeah. I always found this strange. This has nothing to do with JPW, but there's like a, a, a cooler here. You know, this is a residential home. I don't know about you, but I don't have just like... The, see, the, I feel like this would get full of bacteria. How much water are you drinking a day, even if you're well hydrated? And how much water are you specifically drinking out of this cooler? I would venture to guess not, not all that much. So it'd just be sitting there. It'd be like still water after a couple of days. It's just... I don't know. Suspicious. Now he's back. <laughs> oh Christ. Let's get this again. Then <laughs> just boom. <laughs> You know, that's a, that's a bold move. To assert your dominance immediately, break someone's property. You know, you go to see a child, you know, ideally no uh, evidence left behind. First first move you make upon entering the house, damage the property. Hey, okay. Boom. Oh, I break that door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, sit down for a second. What's he going to do here? He's asked to sit down. Let's see what happens. Hey, just walk around. Yeah. Where the fuck is he going? This is like legit scary. Like, he's just, he's, he's walking around like he owns the place. He's practiced, you know what I mean? He, he, uh, he, he knows what he's doing here. I don't know what Chris is going to say here, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's freaky. He just, he, I, I don't know. I don't know how you walk into someone's house, let alone in a situation like this where you're committing, you know, maybe the worst felony possible. Um, I, I, I don't know how you would walk into someone's house and just just freely walk around like you own the place. This is just, it's bad manners, JPW. It's bad manners. It was like... Uh... Weary had gone through an eco challenge. An eco race. challenge. Uh, he had walked. Does anybody know what the fuck that is? I'm sure somebody does. I I, I don't know. This is a mid 2000s thing that uh, I'm not uh, I'm not privy to. He had gotten on a bus. He had walked some more, and when you see him come up the driveway, he's got a backpack and a hat, and he looks like a hiker, and he's weary. And he's weary. He's Sean Michael weary. Thirsty. <laughs> and of course, you know, thirsty takes on a new meaning several uh, several years after this aired. But yeah, he was thirsty. Maybe Hanson was uh, ahead of his time. You know, he knew the meaning of thirsty years before years before it took on mainstream appeal. 
Hey, sir, sir, can you come back over here, please? And have a seat right on the floor. Yeah. And this is one of those times where Hanson's, you know, a little taken aback. This, I don't think that this was Hanson's ideal um, entrance for JPW. He just had to, just had to come in because there's people all over the house. You know, there's camera people hiding and shit. Um, and John Michael, John Pierre Weary, just you know might have run into him. So Hanson had to intercept him before he made it too deep into the. Uh, into the operation here, you know that that upsets Hanson. You can tell he doesn't uh, he he, does, he doesn't like it when people make him uh, change his 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 entrance. Like Cody Green, you know, he starts poking around, going, "But hey, you know, <laughs> Cody Green goes behind the, the 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 divider in that house. Hey, I think it's Cody Green. Oh, I'll get to him eventually. All right, just sit down. All right, so let's take JPW in. Let's let's take in this tall drink of water. Um, baby blue shirt of some stripe. He's got some headphones on. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if what what um, what this little uh, thing on the middle of his shirt is. A little overweight, you know. You can see his belly. Is this is this strap thing to like keep the hat on his head? You know, you pull it up. Uh, when you got the hat on, I, I I don't know. He's got his backpack with all of his worldly possessions. JPW at this point in his life is a bit of a nomad, a bit of a, a bit of a vagabond. You know, no place to call home. So he's got all of his possessions, including, of course, the warm milk, which we'll get to later. He's got all of that in his backpack. But the real treasure for John Pierre Weary is uh, his brain power, as we're going to see here, his creative storytelling abilities beyond uh, beyond human comprehension. <laughs> that's his real that's his real greatest treasure. So let's let's see how that works for him. Such a hurry to get up on the ass of the Oh, nothing. I thought I was looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm sorry. And who were you looking for? John Peterson. John. And boom, there it is. Immediately, look at that gut. <laughs> oh my god. John John Pedersen, he just boom. John Pedersen is the name, and doing construction work is the game for JPW here. I don't know where he gets John Pedersen, but I do admire his uh, his immediate um, story that he's constructing. It is very quick. It was immediate. There was no pause. There was no um. Uh, um, I was looking for work, you know, he was ready to go. It makes me think, you know, he's pretty good at coming up with these excuses off the top of his head. It makes me think he's been in a few, a few pickles like this before, where he's needed to come up with weird, uh, weird uh, alibis and justifications for his, his actions, you know. Pedersen. Yeah. And why were you looking for John? Huh? I was going to talk about some business. Okay. And what business was that? I'm going to try to do try to find a job somewhere, and I heard about John Peterson. Okay. I heard there was a guy named John Peterson in the area. That's all I know. In the area. In the all right. So let's try and like let's try and keep this organized. Okay. He heard that there was a guy named John Peterson in the area. He's looking for work. Not necessarily John Peterson is hiring. Not John Peterson reached out to him for a job. Not John Peterson has a job available. Not anything like that. He heard that there was a guy named John Pedersen, and he's looking for work somewhere. That's all we know so far. So let's let's uh, you know document the story progressing. Uh, that's all. And why did you come to this house looking for John Pedersen? I had a phone call. Mm -hmm. A phone call. Yeah. From. Um. Hmm. I, I, in fact, I don't actually know the guy besides the fact that his name is. Um, yeah. I don't even remember his name. Yeah, just say Udo's. Okay, maybe a little bit too much credit for old JPW here. Uh, John Pedersen was his one name. You know, he had that one in his back pocket. Boom, John Pedersen. Right, why are you doing this disgusting thing? Boom, John Pedersen. John Pedersen. And now he's got a backup name. He can't think of one. Why not use Luke? It would make sense. Like, you know that the question about Luke is going to come up, so... Yeah, it was Luke, and he, John Pedersen's gonna, not John, John Pedersen, John Pierre Weary is gonna say, yeah, I was talking to a college kid later. So why not start that line now? 
when I'd go, yeah, I was talking to a college kid named uh, Luke. He wanted to be in the film industry. We are talking a little bit about, uh, you know, maybe having some hot sex. Maybe I could help him get his SAG shots. And, uh, and then also on the side, I could do a little bit of construction work for uh, Mr. John Pedersen. Luke uh, works as a, you know, as a secretary for Mr. Pedersen's construction company. And I was talking to him about a few things. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. Would you like a copy of Kindergarten Cop or perhaps a, a sip of warm milk? Two hours ago, I've been walking. How far did you walk today? How far did I walk? Yeah, good question. Where did you come from? Um, Pomona. I came from uh, from the mall down the down the road. No, no but okay. originally, where did you start off from today? I started off in Pomona. Where? Yeah. And how far away is that? I have no idea. So yeah. you took a bus? I took a bus part of the way. And walked the rest. Uh, Jean-Pierre Weary is answering these questions like, uh, you know, I answer questions when I call uh, to order a pizza or something, right? I'm not ready for all the trick questions. You know, what would you like? Um, uh, oh, what would I like? Um, he's not ready for the most simple of questions. Uh, I wonder if he's... Uh, I think it's come out that he's got some 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 mental problems, as would be evident. But yeah, he 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 has a hard time digesting information here. I don't I don't know, Jean Pierre Weary. Well, how would it hurt your case if you said, "Here's how long it took for me to get here from Claremont. Uh, I took the bus, took the bus over here." I I, I don't know. It's not gonna. It's not specific enough that it's gonna break any of element of your very loose story thus far, Jean Pierre Weary. <laughs> yeah, I was just walking up the road because I was looking and I was told that you know mm -hmm. there's John Pedersen that has a construction company. In there, isn't it? Oh, cool. So you were just walking down the road I and you thought that this fellow with a construction company lived in this house. Well, somebody told me that he lived. Who somebody. Is somebody? Who was somebody. Great question. A young man on the phone. A young man on the phone. And how did you reach this young man on the phone? And he had called me. Or... He had called you? Just out of the blue? No, I think he had my number. Uh, oh, okay. So he called you just out of the blue? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, so... He got a call out of the blue from a young man who had his number, whose name he doesn't know, and he was walking, looking for work. He just so happened to be in... In, in uh, whatever city they're in right now, in the neighborhood that John Pedersen lived in, and he found out that John Pedersen was hiring at a construction company, and, uh, J and John Pierre Weary is desperate for work. That's, okay, that's the story so far. Now, now, maybe I'm skeptical, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And how did he get you? I don't know how he got my number. I know that, that uh, I've been putting out word that I'm looking for a job. Okay. And I was told that John Pedersen lived here in this neighborhood. So, all I had is this address. You received a call from someone who you didn't know who <laughs> said, go to the house where you've never been. I knew. To see him. And John, John knows where this is going. <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, he's been in, he's been in more than his fair share of these, these, uh, situations. He puts his hand up. No, 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 stop, stop me talking. I know, you know, you're going to try and make it sound ridiculous, but I promise you this, this all makes sense. Just let me, let me clarify my story a little bit. Yeah, you know, he, he knows how to deal with this situation. He's like, no, 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 you got it all wrong. And you know, it doesn't even have the story out yet. Let me get this straight. You went to a house where you thought this man lived and had a construction job. How, a man that you've never met. No, 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 no. You've got, it, you've got me all wrong. <laughs> no. Who said, go to a house where you've no, never but, been. But, but they end up passively. <laughs> it's, just, it's the stupidest part of any of this. But uh, He puts his hand up passively, puts it back down, re collects himself, you know, and then, then goes for it again. The first attempt, you know, Hanson did it back down. So let's, let's try to get it From right. someone who you didn't know. Put the hand up. Who said, go to there a we house go. Put it down. where you've never and been. And here we back up. I back to up. see a man you've never met. Is that no, 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 no. What I said to you is I have a friend. Right. No, wrong. You said nothing about a friend. 
He said Jean Pierre Riri. He said he said uh, John Patterson was hiring. He had a construction company, and some young man on the phone called you because he had your number. He had said nothing about a friend. Okay. <coughs> yep. Cough. Buy yourself some time. You told me about a guy named John Patterson that lives in this neighborhood. Okay. I had an address. I found out where this neighborhood was. Okay. I walked. I looked for work. You couldn't just call John Peterson on the phone? I was not given his actual number. He was, I was told he was just going to be. So, uh, okay. The story's changed again. Um, he has a friend who told him that someone by the name of John Peterson lives in this neighborhood. Okay. And he's hiring. So, Jean Pierre Weary's first move in the dead of night is to get up, go to that town that he does not live in. It took him five hours to get here by bus. You know, walk for many hours to get to John, John Pedersen's house. He wasn't sure which house it was, so he had to go to the back door, knock, knock on, the, on the gate, go pss, pss, and then walk in gut first and break his, uh, his entrance. His, uh, his screen door. Uh, John, I don't think you're getting the job. <laughs> Could you imagine if uh, John Petter, if this was real, you know, John Pedersen is hiring and he doesn't know that John Pierre Reary is stopping by at 11 p.m. On a, on a Thursday evening. And John Pedersen comes in. I'm desperate. I'm desperate for work. I have no income. Would you like a sip of warm milk? <laughs> In the area. Just hanging out, waiting for no, you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. My problem is I was walking. Okay, yeah. My problem is I was walking. So you I, thought you were going to come to a job interview and. <laughs> watch, watch JPW size Hanson up here. Watch this. He's going to size him up. Watch My this. My problem is I was walking. So you I thought you were going to come to a job interview. Look at that. Here. Look right there. Right there. He sized him up. It's like, all right. <laughs> it's, it's fight or flight instinct was kicking in. He was like, if I have to fight here, what are my odds? He's, he's sizing up my So This is like a subtle little little, little uh, bit here. Watch this. Watch him size him up. Walking. Watch yeah, him. You thought you were going to come to the job interview. <laughs> I was going to leave a note. You're going to leave a note? That's all right. Like, this, uh, this is going south for me. Let me just, hmm, can I win this, this battle here? I, I, what, do you, what, what does John Pierre Reary think that Hanson is? I think, um, hmm, uh, John Pierre Reary is familiar with law enforcement. He happens to know law enforcement, but he's not very smart. So I think he thinks that Hanson is law enforcement and not the kid's dad. I think he knows that this is a setup. Um, I, I don't know why, but that's just the vibe that I'm getting. Because he's, he's trying to word things pretty carefully, even though he sounds like a fucking idiot. I, I think he thinks Hanson is law enforcement. I do. That's all. That's all. That's all I have. That's all I have. Yep. Do you see why that doesn't... And Fast Eddie makes a good point. Like, the the subtext of that um, is, you know, I, I have... This is my excuse, you know, and I, I have nothing more to add to this excuse. I, I'm not going to break down. I'm not going to back down from this excuse. This is what I got, and I'm just going to stick with it. And, uh, you know, Hanson, Hanson's not... Uh, not letting him go so easily. He's got some more questions. Makes sense. Well, you know, I understand there's construction up here. Sure. Okay, that's what I know. And I was told that John, you know, I could leave a note here because young man, I, I don't know, college kid. College kid. John, I don't know. College kid. And Hanson picks up on that instantly. You know, college kid. John P. JPW is setting up a story. Everybody here is an adult. Every Everyone... He's an adult, so nothing that I did was wrong. In my mind, everyone was an adult. And, and, and you got to think, I, I always imagine, like, these guys who are making up their excuses and giving a story. You know, JPW is kind of the most famous uh, storyteller predator. Um, all these guys telling a story. In the back of their mind, they got to be running through their chat log that they had with this kid. Thinking, what did I say? What could incriminate me? So they're only using, you know, half of their brain power to come up with these excuses. And, uh, you know, frankly, uh, it's not a good excuse even for half of your brain power, JPW. When I called the number, he said, yeah, come on, in the back gates. Oh, you so, called the number. And what's your... My name is Michael. So Michael. you had his number. 
Michael Wolves? No, Michael Weary. Michael Weary. Oh, you're and free to go. Email An email address? Yeah. Oh, jeez. How about Jane Michael Wilsey at Yahoo.com? I think I have used Jane Michael Wilsey. Yeah, I think maybe but, that, I think maybe about a long time ago I used that email long address. Time, long time. How about today? <laughs> how about on um, how about on the thirtieth of December? Oh, no, I, I, I was... How about no. the 31st of December? On the 31st of December? How about on January? Yeah, oh, uh, 31st of December. What was I... No, no, no. I was at a party. I, um, I was tasting some guy's nuts uh, at a party at a New Year's Eve party. So, I, oh, man, it couldn't have been me. I mean, it must have been someone... I know that there's a few flakes in this world. You know, it must have been one of them. Look at him right here. His quizacious look. He's like, what? What? What is this? I love this. This, you know, the, and the Oscar goes to. He's just, what? What is going on here? Somebody was using my email address, pretending to be me, and and making me say horrible things to a child. Oh, what is going on? JPW can't believe it. You know, so someone is tarnishing his good name. He spent years making up for that little that little mishap where he raped somebody, you know, and trying to live a good life, be a good man, you know, turn over a new leaf. And now some some bad actor is coming out of the woodworks and, and painting him to be some sort of villain, some sort of pedophile. You know, this is no good. This is no this is no good. All that hard work he did on Kindergarten Cop. And, and gay porno movies is going to be undone because, because someone has to go around and lie about it. Oh, poor guy. I, I feel so bad for JPW. Michael, well, did you use it then? I haven't been on a computer in a while. It's been a so while. I used to. How about on the fifth? When I was married, I used to use that name. Oh, okay. Why don't you just I don't know it's going to be a lot easier if you just tell me the truth. And this is great. He, he's preparing to answer, and then he pro like you could see in real time the uh, the cogs spitting in his brain as he puts together what Hanson just said. I'll I'll play it again. Uh, just just watch watch how long it takes him to piece together uh, what Hanson finished with here. So I don't know it's going to be a lot easier if you just tell me. It's going to be a lot easier for what? <laughs> it took him so long. It's going to be a lot easier for what? Like, oh my God. What do you think, JBW? Look, I had a phone call. That's what I had. Okay. That's what I had. I came to what was constructed. I was going to leave it off. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was going to get myself back to town and go home. Are you willing to send me a couple good I love this. Is you know a little lean in. What 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 are you reading? <laughs> he doesn't like. He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't recognize the uh, the dialogue that he authored. You know, a few days ago, back on New Year's Eve, when he should have been out partying, and he should have been out with uh, you know John Dupe. Maybe they could have snuck into a mansion together at a New Year's Eve party at a mansion. Instead, he's at the public library. You know, preying on a child. Down and go home. Yeah. Are you willing to send me a couple? What? Good what is news? that? You are one sexy boy. How tall? Give me dimensions, please. <laughs> it changes. <laughs> it takes him. It takes him a few lines to realize it's his dialogue, and then he crosses his arms in a defensive position because he knows it's his, and he's got to like you know he's got to put it on. Oh my god. <laughs> That was so great. Town and go home. Are you willing to send me a couple? Good What's that? News? What's that you got there? You are <laughs> one sexy boy. How tall? Give me dimensions, please. Give me dimensions, please. I don't know what that refers to. What? What could that mean? I am in the process of going through dating service for a girl that you know. And I think why? Okay, here's a question. Why would that require? 
uh, he he's acting like th- that response. I'm going through a dating service. Like he's acting like that could have been authored by him, but it was not to a child. Like he's entertaining the idea that that could possibly be his words, although not committing to that um, to to that to that line of questioning, um, while also like refuting the the authenticity of who he sent it to. You know, you say I sent it to some some kid named Luke. I'm going through a dating service, and I in fact uh, previously I was pretending to not be familiar with that. Uh, with that, with that dialogue, but now it might be mine, but it was to an adult on a dating service that I'm using who I just so happen to be using that email address with that I said that I haven't used in a long time, but now I have used it recently. Uh, but, it, but it was all on the up and up, you know, it's all, it all with adults. John, pick a, pick a story. You know, I used to admire Jean-Pierre Weary a little bit, you know. He's quick on his feet. Um, you know, his fashion sense is not to be questioned. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of positives about JPW, but now uh, I don't know. You know, his commitment. I, I question it. I question his commitment to the bit. I'm trying to see, you know. Of course, how can I know you're not a cop or working for them or trying to blank with hmm. me, get me busted? Get me busted. You are a really cute 13-year-old, and I love what I saw. Wow. I need to see you in person, talk, and see what you are wanting when you're offline. Also, you talked about peeps porn. All right, let's talk peeps porn here. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's like hand jobs with the Chuck Harding. You know, a lot of a lot of curious questions have been asked to, to gentlemen sitting in on the stool that JPW currently inhabits. Peeps porn... Hand jobs, father son, you know, I, jeez, uh, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I imagine what it is. I imagine it's just CP, but uh, or C Sam, but um, what, a, what a weird way to describe it. Peeps porn. I mean, I think it's 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 Easter. It's a it's a couple days after Easter when I'm recording this, or it's a, uh, yeah, I guess it's the morning of, so it's a few days after Easter. Still got peeps on my mind, you know, Easter peeps. I wonder if I have any left over. I should go. I should go get. I should go get some peeps while I'm recording this. By the way, why wouldn't I want to see you and taste your beautiful body? That's not. You are a gorgeous thirteen. That's not my style. That's not my style. That's not my. That's not my style. But uh, oh, like that couldn't be me. You know, I wouldn't. That's not my style. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't wear that. You know. So your 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 mom gets you a, a a shirt for Christmas, like that's not my style. You know, uh, you're talking to a 13 year old saying, yeah, "I want to taste your beautiful body." That's not my style, Hanson. You don't you don't know me. That's not my style. Uh, affiliation with 13 year olds. No Are you affiliation. A doctor? I think about a long time ago I was. Oh, jeez. Yeah, gee, oh, man. I think about a long time ago I was. Hey, Eel, were you ever a photographer? No. What about what about a long time ago? Were you, I No. I was never a photographer. I don't know if you have to have, like, a photographer's license or if he was employed under the title of photographer. I don't know. I don't know what that means exactly or what sort of threshold you would have to cross to become officially a photographer. Because anyone who takes a fucking picture... He call themselves a photographer, but uh, I don't know. Why, why deny it? Like, yeah, yeah, I did some promotional work for Kindergarten Cop. You think about it a long time. Well, I don't consider myself a photographer. I think it's been a long time. I'm a promotional me. photographer. I know some people that knew that of me. Mm. Did you ever do any promotions for Kindergarten Cop, the movie? I saw the movie. <laughs> I know some. That's that's got kind of, this has got to be one of the best uh, you know uh, lines here. Did you do any work for this movie? I saw the movie. Did you do any work for uh, the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Eel. I saw the movie. I know some people who saw me at the movie. That's very different than working on the movie. The kindergarten cop, the movie. I saw the movie. I know some people that have seen me with the movie, but that that was it. 
I am a promotional photographer and have done such promotions as kindergarten cop. I've and done some porno, landscape, porno film. I've done some landscape photography. I don't have not used Jane Michael Wilson in a long time. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. In, in, in the internet or addresses, I have the name on my school ID because of the fact or school ID. He's forty eight. Bitch, what are you doing in the school? Was he taking photography classes? Oh, Sharpening up his skills. When I was going to school. Yeah, six years ago. Six years, years ago, ago, ten years ago. Six, six to ten, ten years, years ago. ago. 1990, excuse me, 1999, when I left. Oh, you're excused. End of story. End of, end of story? What story? Uh, what, what the fuck does that mean? Six, six years ago? Ten years ago? Six to ten years ago? It was 1990, excuse me, 1999. End of story. What? How's that the end of the story? Hey, Eel, did you, did you steal a billion dollars? Ah, I was going to school six years ago, ten years ago, six to ten years ago. It's 20, 29, excuse me, 2019. End of story. What? That doesn't explain anything. What are you talking about, JPW? End of story. End of what story? But I've had some people that really didn't like me. You? I understood and I seen construction up here and I wasn't sure. Wait a minute, you know, you've seen construction or somebody told you about construction in your story? Well, no, no. What I just saw on, on the way up here, I saw construction. Right. That's what I said. Okay. I said I was told about construction, I saw construction, and I was told that, you know, if I'm late, don't trip. If I'm late, don't trip. There's a young man here I can leave, leave right up. A young man. That's what I was told. Now, who told you this? Just so I have the story straight. It's a Mexican Somebody calls bus. you when? Today, yesterday, the day before. Um, oh, I guess it's been about a week. A week ago. Oh, wow. This is Michael. I know you're looking for a job. <laughs> Actually, we talked about a number of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, just shooting the shit with some random caller. They're like, hey, you know what? I've been, I've been calling random numbers out of the blue. Um, you know, most people just hang up on me instantly. But you and I really get along. Say, are you looking for work? Because <laughs> I happen to know a guy. If you go to his house at 11 p.m. and leave a note with his associate, who's a college-age boy, according to JPW, if you leave a note with him, uh, you know, he'll be sure to get back to you, even though he called you. So JPW's story is uh, he, he didn't have this guy's phone number, but he did because he called him. But then someone else called him and told him about a week ago that there was there was work and he'd have to come here and then earlier today someone told him that there was work here but he couldn't call them back and they told him that it was in the neighborhood but also JPW saw construction and someone told him about construction and so he came here to leave a note at this house but he didn't have the address so he's going around to everybody's back door and knocking on the on the windscreen and psh, and he doesn't have a note written. Okay, yeah, no, okay, got, gotcha, 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 makes sense. And who's the person who called? Who was the person who called? Oh, jeez, was that Luke? Uh, yeah, I had about three different phone calls. Oh. Uh, Michael, who, uh, I talked to Michael on the bus on the 482. Mm. I talked to, um... <laughs> wait a minute, who, just be straight with me. Who called you to say Hanson, that? Hanson's getting a little lost in the sauce here. Like He's trying to, like, catch JPW in some element of the story. He should really go back to laying it all out, you know, and, and seeing what parts of the story JPW wants to keep and, and get rid of and get the, the refined story. Let's get draft two of this epic that JPW was on. This reminds me a bit of the Odyssey, you know. Is, is JPW going to land on some island with uh, Polythemus? The battle of Cyclops. What about the nymphs? You know what's what's going to happen with them. I can't wait to hear the rest of this story. Let's hope uh, Penelope is still is still loyal to JPW and he finally makes it back to Ithaca. There's a job, and you should come here and leave a note. I came on just what he had told me about. That, that's what I came on. I came on. I'm just trying for work. I came on the fact that he was told, I was told there was construction work, and they're not caring whether or not there's some past history, a little past bird, history. you know what I'm saying? I'm just, a little Bert? What did he just say? Work, and they're not caring whether I came on the fact that he was told, I was told there was construction work, and they're not caring whether or not there's some past history, a little Bert, you know what I'm saying? A little Bert? What does he say? 
to work, and they're not caring whether or not there's some past history, a little burnt, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh, if anyone knows what he just said, uh, let me know, because I, I, have, I have no idea what that means. He's trying to find work. Where do you live? I live in Pomona. In Pomona? That's where I live in. What's your address in Pomona? Uh, 693 uh, North Signal. I live in Pomona. That's where I live. I live in Pomona. That's where I live. Why, why is he so indignant about that? <laughs> like, okay, fine. You live in Pomona. Jesus Christ, JPW. I believe you. I believe that you're telling the truth. You know why? You know, I live there. Um, mm -hmm. I know about it. I was told by, uh, on the bus, I was told by, um, actually it was a conversation on the bus. By, uh, by a Mexican oh, okay. who was riding the bus. He says there's... Right, M Michael the Mexican on the okay, bus. I Got know it. about one of those companies I'm going to try to check into. I know about some construction up here. Well, what, what was your plan? Going. Where were you going to stay tonight? What? Where I'm were you going, going to stay Back home. You're going to go back? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you just got to... A five-hour five trip back home after uh, after coming from Pomona to uh, whatever whatever city this... Uh, this uh, Sting took place in. It's 11 p.m. at night. He'll get home at a at a nice four o'clock. I guess he doesn't have work in the morning, so he's got he keeps sleeping. He's got plenty of time to catch up on his beauty sleep. He looks a bit ruffled after a long day here, so he's gonna need a few Z's once he gets home. You came all the way here. I came. What happened? Drop off the couch. Stop. And then you go. What happened? How it started is I was coming up and I'm bus, and I got up here and I found out the number three doesn't run any longer. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now his story makes sense. The number three wasn't running. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And I'm up here, and I'm finding out as I'm walking, I'm looking for a bus stop. And says, <clears throat> and I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm told that it stopped at oh. six o'clock or something like that. I'm already on foot though. Okay. So I'm told unnecessary, unimportant details. Steam something, I don't know. I'm, I'm just told that up in this area, okay, that, that there's, uh, and I had an yeah. address. I, all I did is write down an address. I was told that the, a young man. Who was sending these emails with your. I haven't moved out of account in, in, since 1999. All right, so we're about halfway through this video. I'm going to split this up into two parts. Um, yeah, JPW story so far. You know, a Mexican on the bus named Michael told him there was construction. He saw construction. Someone called him. Someone, a separate, called him and said that someone was hiring in this neighborhood. Uh, then he, 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 that was a week ago. Then today he got on a bus. Turned out that the number three wasn't running anymore. So he continued on foot, um, caught another bus or something, came here, got a call from someone else, talked to them for a bit. Uh, they didn't tell him John Pedersen's phone number, but they told him to leave a note. He went around every house, knocked on the back door, uh, left a note, I guess, at a bunch of random houses in this neighborhood, and happened to run into Chris Hansen. It's a goddamn tragedy. All right, that that's where we're at. That's where, we're, where we'll leave it for part two, so I'll see you guys in part two.